So NVIDIA's Pascal GTX 1070 is set to be released on June 10th and it's looking to be amazing. So in this video, I want to give you a $1,070 build guide for the GTX 1070. This is gonna be an epic gaming PC. So without further ado, let's get into it. With an MSRP of $379 for non-reference edition, this card is looking to be the new price to performance king, NVIDIA comparing to the performance to that of a Titan X. Faster than a Titan X, faster than a Titan X, $379 and given the popularity of its Maxwell predecessor, the GTX 970, I would not be surprised to see the GTX 1070 become one of the most popular cards on the GPU market. So I'll put the exact specifications for this card on the screen. It's a cut down version of the GTX 1080 using the same GP104 chip, a 1500 megahertz base clock, with that sick, wicked overclocking potential. 1,920 CUDA cores, that's 25% less than that of the GTX 1080. Eight gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. So the bottom line consensus is that the performance expectations out of this card are around that of the Titan X. So this is a build guide picking the parts that I think give a great value and awesome performance. So it's great prep for those of you that are anxiously awaiting the release of the GTX 1070, like I know myself and many others are. So if you're looking to build a new rig to get some absurd frame rates at 1080p, get great performance at 1440p, and even playable performance at 4K, turning the settings down a bit in 4K for those more graphically intensive games. So this $1,070 gaming PC is aimed for gaming at the 1440p resolution. So I want to give you my estimates for the GTX 1070's performance at 1440p, by doing some extrapolation from all the benchmarks we've seen of the GTX 1080 so far from all of our favorite tech tubers recently. With their benchmarks showing the GTX 1080 to generally be about 20% faster than that of the Titan X. So Nvidia saying that the GTX 1070 will be slightly faster than the Titan X. A lot of us are thinking that the 1070 and the Titan X will trade blows with each other, sometimes one being better than the other. But for the sake of this video, given that we don't have GTX 1070 benchmarks yet, I wanna give you my best guesstimates, assuming a conservative 25% less FPS than that of the GTX 1080 at 1440p, being that the 1070 is a cut down version of the GTX 1080, using the same die, 7.2 billion transistors, 25% less CUDA cores, and a 7% lower base clock. So here's some expected FPS at 1440p. Star Wars Battlefront Ultra FXAA 69 FPS, Far Cry Primal Ultra SMAA 54 FPS, Rise of the Tomb Raider Very High FXAA 77 FPS, Doom Max Settings 83 FPS, and Witcher 3 Max Settings Hairworks on SSAO 56 frames per second. So let's dive right into this build. Links and deals below for all these parts for those of you that are interested. For the processor, the most important component besides the graphics card for a gaming rig, it processes the game logic, handles animation tasks, and prepares all the commands for the GPU to create the gaming scene. We are going with the newest Skylake architecture from Intel with the i5-6600K quad-core processor clocked at 3.5 gigahertz for $250. Having four or more powerful cores is a must in the new era of gaming where all the AAA titles utilize four or more cores. The i5-6600K is really the sweet spot for a CPU in a gaming rig, pretty much matching the i7-6700K's gaming performance by typically being able to match its overclock. While the i7 does have hyper threading which is excellent for multi-threaded applications like video encoding and most newer games do utilize all eight threads the end result boost in fps is still marginal not really justifying the hundred dollar price premium in terms of sps for a computer that's main purpose is for gaming the i7-6700K is still considered the consumer processor king for gaming. So if you aren't price conscious, this would be ideal to pair with the new GTX 1080 King from Nvidia. For the cooler, I went with a really cool looking air cooler from Cairo Rig, the C7 for just $30. It has an abundance of raving reviews, is low profile at 47 millimeters in height,
Lite has four premium heat pipes, a copper base, and is extremely cost effective at just $30. Talk about bang for the buck. This is awesome to pair with the i5 6600K given its lofty overclocking reputation, keeping it cool under load. For the motherboard, we went with the MSI Z170A SLI Plus ATX LGA motherboard for just $140 on Amazon. It's very premium motherboard, looks sleek on the higher end of the motherboard spectrum from what I typically recommend, but this build is on the high end, so why not get more out of what a motherboard can offer? Having Turbo M.2 if you wanted to add a blazing fast SSD, and also has Turbo U.2 connector, intuitive Click 5 BIOS for very easy overclock, a USB 3.1 Gen 2 port, and in the front it has four USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports. Two-way SLI support, so if you wanted to add a GTX 1070 down the road for two-way SLI, you are ready with this motherboard, and it has armor so there's no GPU sag. Also, it has three-way crossfire support if you did happen to go with Team Red in this build, and it looks assassin-like with that black aesthetic. For RAM, I went with the Corsair Vengeance LPX 16GB 2 8GB sticks of DDR4 memory for just $70. So the differences between 8GB and 16GB is very small. Max, a few FPS, and typically none in terms of gaming performance at this setup's 1440p target gaming resolution. So two 8GB sticks, this system will have more than enough, and if you wanted to save $25, you could opt for two 4GB sticks and you'll be hard pressed to tell a difference. Oh, and these sticks also match the black stealth interior theme we got going on in this gaming PC build. For storage, the best value option out there right now in terms of storage capacity and speed at 7200 RPM, the Western Digital Caviar Blue one terabyte at just $50. So plenty of capacity for storing all your movies, music, games, photos, and whatnot. And of course, you'll always have the option to add an SSD down the road if you want a really snappy system and those really fast load and boot times. So I'll leave some of those options in the description box down below for those of you that are interested. Okay, so now for the graphics card. As you know, we are going with the incredible GeForce GTX 1070 using the new Pascal architecture and I'm hoping to get it near the MSRP of $379 for a custom board partner card. A custom air-cooled add-in board card from MSI is my target for some nice overclocking. I'll be adding a link in the description box down below when it's available. If it delivers that $1,000 Titan X performance at a fraction of the cost at around $400, this graphics card really is an amazing value. Redefining the landscape of the GPU market for sure. So we've gone over the expected performance that is perfect for utilizing your 144 hertz monitor at 1080p and is 1440p gaming ready and ready to dabble in some 4K with settings lowered a bit in those more graphically intensive games. All in all, I think the GTX 1070 is looking to be the card to get. For the case, I went with NZXT S340 ATX mid tower case for just $76. It's glossy black, although it comes in white if you prefer. White might actually look better because it matches that Kyra Rig cooler we went with. Both are going to look pretty sick though. Has a 90% steel construction and gives that clean minimalistic vibe that's definitely the trend right now. It has a grommetless steel cable management bar. It's budget oriented, but doesn't make any huge sacrifices coming from a company with a big reputation of that of NZXT. I see a lot of these and the H440 case on my setup challenge series on my YouTube channel that you can check out if you haven't already. And I always love seeing them. It's easy to build in, lots of ways to hide those cables and no complaints whatsoever at $76. Lastly, for the power supply, we went with the EVGA Supernova NEX 650 watt 80 plus gold certified fully modular ATX power supply for $78. It has 90% efficiency under typical loads, a big plus that it's modular, so you get an even cleaner look inside the case with the big side window that we went with in the NZXT S340 case. It's got a 10 year warranty, those high quality Japanese capacitors, a silent 135 millimeter fan, and it's perfect for this build at 650 watts, way more than enough given the power efficiency efficiency of the GTX 1070 and the i5 6600K. You could get away with much less, but the big selling point about this EVGA Gold certified power supply is the quality in this power supply, which really is crucial given all the expensive hardware that we went with in this gaming PC build. All right, guys, you let me know what you think of this $1,070 GTX 70 gaming PC build. I really hope you liked it. Really hope it helped you out if you are looking to build a new gaming PC or just like watching build videos. Let me know if any of you guys are upgrading your graphics card to the 1070 or the 1080 or waiting to see what Polaris has to offer us. Thanks so much for watching. Please be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Comment if you have a comment and hit the subscribe button right here, 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 or here. It really helps me out a lot and will help my channel grow. This is John from Awe of Tech. I'll catch you guys in the next video.